So I'm starting this week with uh, the regulating wedges. The way these are made is uh, I do most of this in my mill. I run a ball mill down this to get close to the um, radius of the barrels. And then you can see it's made in two parts. And you can see the parts are keyed together. A little uh, gap there. And they key together so that they slide up and down. And they're also wedge shaped. They're a little wider at this end than they are at the other end. And uh, the way this works is I'll solder these two parts together and then I will solder the both of them in between the barrels. About like so. And uh, what this allows me to do with the wedge being keyed like this in two parts allows me to regulate the barrels both for the horizon and for the spread and uh, as these you know go up and down I can change the barrel on the horizon and then as I push it in or out it'll spread or let the barrels come together so for now this will just get temporarily soldered in place like it is and then I'll keep working on the rib work and the other parts that go in here but this is the first part I'm making this week I gotta make another one of these for the other set of barrels but this is the most important part for uh, doing regulation is making a wedge that uh, is a split wedge that goes both directions allows you to move the barrels in any direction you need to So there it is, soldered in. Uh, not too much to look at really. It's uh, you know just basic solder work and uh, just a decent fit and fill it in with solder. Good heat penetration and let the solder flow through. Um, I'll start working on the top rib next. So I started working on the rib here and I put it in my mill and I uh, machined a groove for the where the front sight's going to go. Eventually this rib will get drilled and tapped for a screw and the front side will sit right in that little slot there and be uh, held down with a screw on the front edge here. And then down here in the middle area, about six inches from the breech, I cut in a dovetail for the uh, express site to go into. So now what I'm going to start working on is I need these edges, bottom edges, to fit nicely to the contour of the barrels and so I'm going to come in and hand file these edges until I get a real nice tight fit here and then I'll be able to solder this on with a real nice good tight fit up that the solder will wick right into the edge and hold it on there really good working on the bottom strap rib here and uh, this is the one that has the ramrod pipes and whatnot on it and I want to tell you about the couple different ways this can be done um, one of the ways it's done is, uh, and I'm going to kind of go through this in steps of easiest and laziest to the best way, in my opinion anyways. Um, the lazy man's way is uh, to just take a piece of flat strap, fit it to the barrels and solder it on, then take the pipes and solder them on right on top. And I've seen a few originals done that way. The problem is, when you do it that way, when you just solder it on and then solder the pipes on top, what you end up with is when you put your ramrod in here, the gap, the distance between the thickness of your pipe, makes your ramrod stand up above the rib. And it looks kind of tacky that way, it gives you a gap in there. Not the best way to do it, but like I said, I've seen a few done that way. Uh, the other way I've seen them done is... Uh, I've seen the ramrod pipes soldered onto the barrels directly, and then I've seen the rib fitted up to them, and it's contoured to match the contour of your pipes, and everything's fitted real tight, and it looks really good. Um, I've done a few that way myself, seen quite a few originals that way where the pipes are, are separate from the rib, and they're soldered directly, and soldered on, and then the rib soldered on and fitted, and everything's filed to fit smooth with a clean edge. Looks really good that way. Problem is, doing it that way, and I've seen this on several guns, when the uh, ribs are done like that, <clears throat> there's not always a guarantee that everything's going to get completely closed in with solder. And it's kind of a pain when you do regulation. That's the biggest reason not to do it, actually, is, is regulation. Um, when you start heating up the front of this thing and you've got all these ribs and everything on here, you've got to have about a dozen clamps holding all this stuff together if everything is a separate part and piece so that when you heat it up, it doesn't all fall apart on you. So the last way to do it is the way that I like to do it. And uh, that's to take one solid rib, the whole length, contour it to match the ramrod, and then come in and machine the 
pipes flat and the rib flat so that they fit together really nice, give you a really nice fit. And then I like to TIG them together so that they're one solid piece. And you can tell that this rib, this uh, pipe here is the one that's got the tab on it for the forearm key. And then this one up at the front is just a plain pipe. And then the one here in the middle is the one that's going to have the swivel on it. And so this one's made in two pieces. The pipe's made, then I make the swivel, then I TIG them together and file it all down to give it a real nice look and shape. And then I'll TIG this part onto here and it'll all be one piece that way. Then I'll come in and I'll file these edges and fit them to the barrels and then it'll be ready to solder on. One of the nice things about doing it this way, um, a lot of originals the pipes were soldered on because we didn't have TIGs back then. And uh, so the pipes were just soldered on and uh, I've seen quite a few originals where uh, the swivel pipe the solder eventually pops loose and you're missing the swivel out of it. Matter of fact, I've got an original Manton over on the other side of the shop right now that I'm going to do a restoration job on that's missing its swivel pipe. And so I like to TIG these on. You TIG them on like this and, and file it all down and fit it all in and uh, you can't see the weld once it's all fitted down in there. And I'll pretty much guarantee that short of ripping the whole rib loose, this pipe's never going to come loose off of here. So it's a good way to do it. It gives it a really nice look and it gives you a one piece rib that's solid from end to end. So I'll get this one welded on and then I'll fit this up and I'll be ready to solder the top and bottom rib on this barrel. So I've got the ribs all clamped in place and you'll notice I didn't use wire and wedges like was traditionally done. I'm uh, kind of fond of these hose clamps myself. Uh, I still put a spacer underneath of them, but uh, these allow me to adjust on the fly. I can twist, twist them down, tighten them up, loosen them, adjust things as I need to as I'm soldering along. It's kind of like that. prefer it better. Uh, works a little better than the wire and wedges system. But uh, wire and wedges has worked for a long time. Um, I'm going to start heating this up and uh, start soldering this here in a second. And uh, the way I heat this up is uh, I like to use um, rods that fit... Uh, inside the barrels and I heat them up in my furnace I've got about six of them and I heat them up in my uh, heat treat furnace and slide them up in there two at a time and uh, that allows the heat to radiate from the inside out and it draws the solder down inside the um, fitted joint which makes a much stronger fit um, it's a very old method these uh, you know using soldering irons basically rods soldering rods is a uh, very old method. Um, used to use brass or copper. Um, you can get away with using steel ones if you're careful not to damage the rifling or the uh, crowns in any way. But uh, it takes a little experience. So if you've got the experience and you know how to use them, steel rods is alright. If you're not any experienced, copper or brass works just as good. Uh, if you don't have a heat treat furnace or some convenient way to, to keep six of these hot at all times, um, one of the best ways to do it is to uh, build a little pan or dig a trench out in the dirt use a bag of uh, charcoal briquettes, barbecue briquettes and uh, light them up, get them good and hot, stick all your rods down in there and uh, just keep rotating them out of the charcoal briquettes it'll buy you you know three to four hours of good time that you can use to keep your rods hot so more than enough time to do a simple um, rib soldering job basically So, but that's how I'm gonna do it, I'll get all these rods the ones that I need, the six or so that I need, heated up and I'll start uh, soldering this together So there it is with the uh, rib soldered on both sides and uh, cleaned up just a little bit to get the flux and stuff off of there. And of course the tang fits on there nice. Got a little bit of transition work to clean up here, smooth all this out so that it's all even. Uh, this is sticking up just a little bit here and the tang sticking up just a little bit so that's all got to be filed down. And then uh, I've got to come in and clean up all this excess solder and get it all cleaned up. But overall, it turned out to be pretty decent. Flip it over here, show you what the bottom looks like. You can see the pipes and rib and everything in there. And this side will have to be cleaned up as well. All that solder will have to be cleaned up, and I'll uh, do that next week. Uh, I've still got the other set of barrels to do. That set back there, I've still got to do both or all the ribs on it and get them all soldered on. So that's what I'll be spending the rest of the week doing. But uh, once I get that other set of ribs done and then uh, get these cleaned up, then these barrels are basically ready to inlet into a 
stock blank. So that's how that's done, and that's basically a set of double barrel rifle barrels. And uh, of course, regulation will have to be done after it's stocked and everything. There's an old saying that says um, that rings true, or that holds a ring of truth to it, and that's an old uh, metal worker saying. And uh, what that comes from is if uh, you were doing solder work or welding work, blacksmithing work, and you wanted to know if your metal was good and your joints were good, you could uh, test them by ringing them, and uh, it's just a matter of suspending it. And and tapping it down the sides and if it rings out and there's no dull spots in it anywhere then you know you've got a good joint because if you don't have a good joint when you tap it it'll sound dull and it won't ring like this one just did so so a little little two bits for you that uh, the old saying of it rings true comes from uh, metal workers who used to ring their metal work to see if everything was joined up solid and there weren't any blank spots or hollows or, or dull spots in it anywhere so but that's going to be it for as far as the video this week like I said I've got that other set of barrels to do but it's all the same work I just did so it's just a duplication of what I'm already doing so uh, that'll be it for this week 